Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Total Extreme Wrestling video and we are here just two weeks away from Clash of Champions and also I can reveal, seeing as they're now doing it in real life, three weeks away from NXT TakeOver 31. A bit of a quick turnaround, I wasn't expecting it but we will make up for it with this week's booking and get things in motion. Uh, for that pay-per-view. Before that, we've got Monday Night Raw and, of course, that second triple threat match uh, to, f to figure out who will be going on to the WWE Championship contest at Clash of Champions. AJ Styles is involved already as the champion. Kevin Owens has booked his place by beating Orton at SummerSlam. He gets his shot at Clash of Champions. Randy Orton himself is in the match after winning last week against Lashley and Humberto in a triple threat. This week... It's a big one. Drew McIntyre will be taking on Andrade and Seth Rollins. And the winner goes to Clash of Champions to fight for the WWE Championship. This should be a big, big, big week. Let's crack on with it with Monday Night Raw. And we're opening up with the former Raw Women's Champion, the man... Becky Lynch. Becky was in action, a 68-rated matchup against Nia Jax. This is okay. I was hoping it would breach the, the 70, but of course, Nia, uh, her popularity is not great, and a 47 performance isn't fantastic. A 71 from Becky, though, is about what you'd expect. Perhaps a little bit low, actually. She should perhaps be doing better, but for a raw match, that's okay. Nearly three stars, no problem at all. 15 minutes, and Becky looks good again. Another victory for the man, Becky Lynch, over a Difficult opponent in Nia Jax. Um, so, yeah, she is got Shayna Baszler in her sights um, at Clash of Champions, perhaps. Um, after the match, she cuts a promo and Shayna shows how the difference in Becky Lynch, that actually it's a promo and character work where she really, really does shine, particularly during the, the run she had right before she went off pregnant. Um, Becky Lynch is a real, real good character. She cuts a promo on Shayna Baszler and she says, listen, tonight understand there's a tag team contest, the Kabuki Warriors against Charlotte and Shayna. I am a stickler for in-ring competition. I'm going to let that match go on. I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to be out there. However, Shayna, just so you are fully aware, and just so you are 100% ready, as soon as that bell rings, I am going to be out there and I am ready to fight. I hope you are too. A real message here from Becky Lynch and a little bit of a tease that Becky's not done tonight and she's after Shayna Baszler. A, a warning, a shot in the barrel from Becky Lynch tonight. We went to a satellite interview with Kevin Owens who will be back in time for Clash of Champions. That's confirmed. And he cuts a promo here on Randy Orton talking about the fact that at SummerSlam, Kevin Owens got one of the biggest, biggest wins in some time. He would put himself back out there and felt like KO once again. And Randy Orton had to go and ruin it afterwards like a sore loser. Randy Orton thought he had taken the title challenge away from Kevin Owens. But Randy Orton was wrong. Randy Orton was also very wrong because Kevin Owens will be at Clash of Champions. Kevin Owens will compete in the Fatal 4-Way. Kevin Owens will kick Randy Orton's ass. And at Clash of Champions... Kevin Owens will become WWE champion. 68, pretty good promo from Kevin Owens. Worked well without a script. And uh, yeah, he's a good baby face on the roster. Very good. So I'm pleased with that. Managed to use that. Um, I'm not sure if he'll be back next week or the week afterwards, but we will see him surely, hopefully, before Clash of Champions. Interesting one here, 70 rated segment. We go backstage to Becky Lynch. Um, she's She's got herself changed. She's ready um, sort of after after a matchup, she's she's sort of showered and changed, whatever. Um, and she comes out into the locker room that she is sharing with Seth Rollins. And it's the first time during the save and the first time in a long while on WWE television, we are acknowledging the relationship between Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. Of course, fiance, and they did acknowledge it when they were both baby faces, and then Seth turned heel and they were really kept apart. But we're going to start putting them back together um, slightly um, and it will all play out in the long term. This is a start of a real long term storyline that potentially could go all the way to WrestleMania. That is all I'm going to say on this. You guys make your own mind up of what you think I'm going to do. Um, Becky Lynch then comes out and yeah. 
she's congratulated by Seth uh, for the victory and they settle in and uh, ready to go and we're going to come back to these later but a 70 rated segment and just put the two of them back into the same room again singles competition here for a 64 much better than the performances as well so that's pretty good Angel Garza defeats our truth in a singles competition um, Austin Theory you can say he got involved in the finish but well, was there for the finish um, but I'd like Gaza to get a simple, clean victory over our truth because one will be a future star and one is there to put talent over. You make your mind up on which one. Angel Gaza, 61. Our truth, 53. Um, and yeah, Gaza, a nice, simple victory. After the match, him and Theory beat down our truth to just show their dominance as a team together. Gaza and Theory beat down our truth for 47. No real storyline to this. I'm just, I'm pushing Gaza and Theory a little bit more. That's all I'm doing here, but there's no real storyline just yet. Gaza and Theory are a real, real talent um, in the tag team division. At least for now, they're going to be heels. But long term, I do see them as a babyface tag team. Gaza has got babyface all over him to me. Um, and eventually they'll split. But yeah, 47 is okay. Six-man tag contest here for 69. So this is a little bit lower than I'd like it to be, actually. But that's probably due to the fact that AOP are involved. Razor, 50. Aiken, 49. Randy Orton, the best of the lot with a 76. Ivar, 62. Eric, 59. And Humberto Carrillo, 53. So yeah, it's probably AOP that bring this down. But that's not too bad. Randy Orton and AOP, the Raw Tag Team Champions, defeat Humberto Carrillo and the Viking Raiders. Randy Orton pinned Humberto last week to get the victory. He does the same this week. Humberto taking the losses to a big star in Randy Orton. I'm sure that's not an issue for him. Um, and AOP, of course, are the Raw Tag Team Champions, but their popularity is low. So we're putting them in matches with stars, which is going to help sort of boost them. Um, and they got a victory over the Viking Raiders technically here. And Viking Raiders are going to be set up as the next Tag Team Challengers, which we'll get to in just a second. But yeah, pretty good stuff. And Orton, another victory. He looks good going into the pay-per-view. Good stuff. We said we'd get to it. Here we go. The angle between the Viking Raiders and AOP. Um, the Viking Raiders are sort of collecting themselves in the ring. Um, AOP are leaving up the ramp with their championships. And Viking Raiders go, whoa, 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 whoa. Not too, not too quick. Not too quick. Not so fast is what I meant to say. They say you may have beaten us in this six-man tag, but none of us was pinned. And we both know this is the match that you can prove yourself as tag team champions. Take on the Viking Raiders at Clash of Champions. Put those titles on the line and let's see who the real badasses of the tag team division are. And Aiken and Razor look at each other. They start to go back to the ring and Aiken and Razor get on the mic. They say, done and destroy Viking Raiders with a belt shot each. Um, they weren't quite expecting it. And AOP stand tall and accept the segment and they stand tall for a 64, which for these two teams, I don't think is bad at all, really. We go back to Seth and Becky. This time, Seth struggled without a script, which is interesting. 70 raid segment again. Uh, this time, Seth's trying to talk Becky out of attacking Shayna. He says, you're going to get your championship match. We know you're going to get your championship match. Why don't you just wait for them and win back your title? You're going to put yourself in a really bad position. Seth sounding like a concerned husband he's not turning baby face but but we're acknowledging the relationship so if we're acknowledging the relationship you have to make it seem like a human relationship they may not agree on how they go about their business but seth and becky are together and seth is concerned for becky's welfare and it, he sort of says listen i don't need this i don't need to be worrying about you today i don't need to be worrying about whether you are going to get yourself beaten up or taken in the back of an ambulance I've got a shot tonight to get myself into the WWE Championship picture. Please, please. And Becky just goes, hmm, you do you, I'll do me, shall I? And walks out the room for a little bit. Becky not listening to Seth Rollins. After break, we go into the general manager's office. That's Christian, if you missed last week. AJ Styles comes in and just like last week, is complaining about the fact that he has to defend his championship at Clash of Champions in the Fatal 4-Way. He is really not happy and Christian goes, you, you aren't learning, are you, AJ? Fine. I can see that you've come into here because you want competition. AJ, oh, no, no, I'm going, no, 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 no. Christian goes, so you get competition. The WWE Champion will be in action in a tag team contest tonight. It'll be you, AJ, teaming with someone you teamed with last week. You seem to get along well with him. Jackson Riker. AJ Styles and Jackson Riker will team up. 
against the Street Profits tonight. AJ, put into action. Similar to what we are doing last week, getting involved with other people um, to help the other people. Um, AJ and Christian seem to have a little bit of a log ahead of an issue uh, as the face GM and the heel WWE champion. 71, pretty good. Drew McIntyre got a promo on Seth Rollins to hype up the main event tonight. Drew McIntyre says tonight he reclaims his spot. Tonight he takes back the WWE Championship for the fans. He takes it from the tyrannical AJ Styles and he takes it and really, really, really holds it high. Tonight he goes through Seth Rollins. Tonight he goes through Andrade and at Clash of Champions. He regains his WWE Championship. 70, good promo from Drew McIntyre. Next up, Bobby Lashley will be in action. Lashley lost out last week in a triple threat, so it's time to get him some heat back. He's going to be going up against a local talent. Now, I did this last week, and no way Jose and Eric Young were managed to, to get on the show. This week, we get Curtis Axel. Curtis Axel. Yes, or Joe Henning, but I wanted to use Curtis Axel as the name because that's what he's known as in the WWE. Duh, makes sense. And it's a full-on squash here. Bobby Lashley, in ring form to 59, not great. Curtis Axel, 54, makes us a 47. Why? Lashley was off his game. Declining physical ability. Done to a hot crowd, though, so it shouldn't matter. Uh, I mean, I don't understand what we've lost on there. That's, that's harsh to me. Uh, but Bobby Lashley defeats Curtis Axel under four minutes. Probably should have been less than that, to be honest. Um, and yeah, big squash for Bobby Lashley. And the reason we've done that is because afterwards, MVP and Lashley get on the mic and they call out Apollo Crews and Cedric Alexander. They say, that is what you do with your opportunities. But what we want is to help each other. What we want is to work together. MVP and Cedric, sorry, MVP and Bobby Lashley open up their arms and stretch out an, an olive branch. They say, Apollo, Cedric, we want to work together. We want to work together. And what they want to do is form the Hurt Business. Um, Lashley and MVP put the offer out. They say, don't answer now, think about it. And we'll take your answer next week. 59 for this is okay. MVP really holding it together, I guess. But will Apollo and Cedric accept? We'll find out next week on Monday Night Raw. One half of the Women's Tag Team Champions, Alexa Bliss, was in action against Peyton Royce last week. The Iconics won um, their tag team contest and made title sort of ambitions clear. This week, Peyton Royce wins again. She pins Alexa Bliss with a roll-up out of nowhere. 57 from Alexa Bliss, 52 from Peyton. Gives us a 60, so that's boosted it somehow. So the Lashley one was brought down. This one's boosted it. I can't explain it either. Um, but a good win for Peyton Royce. And we are going to start building now. Clash of Champions. I want all the championships I can on the line. That's what the pay-per-view is built on. Championships. So the Women's Tag Team Championship is going to be on the line. It's Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross against the Iconics. We've not confirmed it yet, but that's where we're going to go. After the match, the Iconics steal the Tag Team Championships from Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. They beat them both down and walk away with the Championships. 44, ignore that. It's just the most, it made the most sense of what I meant. Listen to what I'm saying, not what, not what you read, I guess. It's the best way to say it. 44, though, could be better. Jackson Riker could a promo on Alistair Black for 58. He says... Last week, Alistair Black wanted to step up to a man, a gunner like me, in tint. Well, guess what? I want to step up. I want to step up and take that United States Championship. Tonight, I'm in the ring with a WWE Champion, a man I could call a friend, AJ Styles, starting to link them together. That's what we're trying to do. Um, Jackson Riker says, oh, tonight we're going to win, and then I want a shot. Alistair, I'm making it very, very clear. I'm coming for you and your dead black heart. 58 is okay from Jackson Riker. Not quite as good as last week anyway. But his promos aren't a strong thing. Hopefully the match itself that he does eventually have will be good. The match here, the tag team match, was brilliant. 78. AJ Styles carrying it with a 77. 63 from Jackson Riker. 60 from Montez. And 56 from Angelo Dawkins. So that's low, which is a little bit weird. But as you can see, Styles and Riker defeat the Street Profits. Angelo Dawkins took the pin from AJ Styles. Good match. Another good win for AJ, who's on a bit of a roll lately. Um, once again, just like last week, uh, we put the WWE... We put the WWE champion in this position and he's going to hopefully help everybody else. 78, good, good matchup. Afterwards, Alistair Black tries to cut a promo on uh, Jackson Riker. It looks like he's about to accept the challenge when Andrade comes into the shot and says, before you go, 
mouthing off to some hillbilly wannabe, let's talk about the fact that I still want my rematch. If you're as much of a man as you think you are, you'll give it to me next week. Tonight, I'm going to go on to Clash of Champions and win the WWE Championship at the pay-per-view. But before that, I want my United States Championship back too. Next week, it is confirmed. Alistair Black accepts. It is Andrade versus Alistair Black with the United States Championship on the line. They've had a good feud, these two. Some good matches. Will they finish it off? with a classic. That is not all next week though, as the WWE Champion will be in action once again. After that victory there against the Street Profits, one half of the Street Profits, Montez Ford has taken exception to the way that AJ Styles has celebrated over Angelo Dawkins' body. We can say that if you want. Montez Ford has made the challenge. He wants AJ Styles one-on-one -on -one next week on Monday Night Raw, and Christian has made the match. Okay then, before the women's tag team contest, Charlotte Flair could a promo on Shayna talking what she has done in similar to last week's episode of how Shayna is not a champion that should be respected. She's acting face like uh, 67. It's still going to struggle. It might struggle as a turn, but uh, I've got a storyline in, in mind. So let's see what happens. 67. The tag contest then is the Kabuki Warriors. That's Oscar and Kairi Sane against Charlotte and Shayna Baszler. And he gets us a 75. So that's really, really good stuff. Helped massively by Oscar, Oscar and Shayna. 77 from Oscar. Shayna 79. Charlotte 65. Kairi Sane 57. But as you can see here, Charlotte Flair submits Kairi Sane with the figure four and gets the victory for the heel team. She's still a heel, by the way. Kairi Sane was off again, but 75 is very, very good. As they are, well, celebrating, I guess, as the match finishes and yeah so they had they have their arms raised charlotte and shayna and charlotte and shayna start to argue themselves and start to brawl themselves becky is well becky of course is no stranger to a fight she comes down to ready to fight and in the end what happens here is important because shayna baszler takes out Becky Lynch, but not in the way you'd expect. Um, Becky sort of takes a, an awkward bump on the floor, is what you can say, and it's clear that Becky has got a problem here. Neck and head issue. Charlotte Flair sort of takes advantage of, of the, 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 the commotion to spear Shayna through the barricade, but the real issue here is Becky Lynch. She seems to maybe have got a stinger, a concussion. I'm not sure. Um, you, well, we're not sure watching on. Um, Charlotte, after spearing Shayna, gets up, scruggly anyway, and sort of helps Becky Lynch, gets her help. They may have been rivals in the past, but they respect each other, remember, and you can sort of really play into the fact that they used to be friends and maybe they could be friends again, etc, etc, etc. Becky Lynch is being carted off in a stretcher as we head to break. 77. Interesting. We come back from break for a 71 rated segment. Seth and Christian needed a script, but Becky is being loaded into the back of an ambulance. She's passed out. She is not conscious, and she's loaded into the back of an ambulance. Of course, Seth Rollins comes over, and he's freaking out. He says, this is, what I, this is why. This is what I said to you not to do this for. I'm now going to go out and fight for the WWE. What, what, how can I do that? You can't. And Seth gets in the ambulance. Seth gets in the ambulance and as the ambulance drives away on the scene arrives Murphy and Christian Christian goes wait did he just what the main event is next and Seth Rollins has left the arena Christian says fine I understand that you know what he's got to be there for his fiance fine instead what we'll do and Christian on the spot goes it will still be a triple threat match it will still be Drew McIntyre versus Andrade versus somebody else and Seth Rollins will still have a chance to go to Clash of Champions because you, Murphy, are fighting in his place. If you win, Seth gets his title shot. There we go then, 71 for the segment. And a little bit of a bait and switch, um, but we're playing into Becky and Seth's relationship, giving Seth a, uh, an out, maybe, is what we're thinking. And yeah, Murphy will fight on behalf of his uh, well, mentor, whatever you want to call it, Seth Rollins. It'll be Drew versus Andrade versus Murphy. The winner will go to Clash of Champions to fight for the WWE Championship, or if Murphy wins, Seth will go, and it's next. This is going to be big. 
How do we end Monday Night Raw? It's been a pretty good Monday Night Raw. Obviously, things have been improving week on week. So like this, two months ago, we'd have been like, wow, what a great Raw. But this is still pretty good. We have a good main event, and it'll be very good. So Drew, Andrade, and Murphy, they give us 69. So it's not a good main event. Mm. That is a big shame. That is a very big shame. And I really feel like I've been trashed a little bit by one or two things. Anyway, as you can see here, Drew McIntyre pins Murphy. Drew McIntyre is in the match. And our match at Clash of Champions is confirmed. It'll be a fatal four-way for the WWE Championship. AJ Styles defends against former champion drew mcintyre another former champion randy orton and a man who may have been universal championship but he's looking for his first wwe championship kevin owens it's gonna be a pretty big matchup but back to this it's it's a little bit of a blow so we talked through it then andrade 70 that's a pretty good performance for him 82 from drew is brilliant drew is killing it right now murphy 56 is about what i expected but i don't think that's what's brought it down so much i think this is an issue so as you can see we put aj styles on commentary for this one and tom phillips and aj styles really clashed horribly i feel like that's going to have brought it down big time and that's disappointing like inconsistency, announcer chemistry, and low experience. If we don't put AJ there, I think you're looking at 74. And I'd have taken that because I understand Murphy's like maybe it is the Murphy thing. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me if if you think if you think you know. It's a bit of a shame, but Drew qualifies and it's gonna bring the show down to a 71, which was probably it's going to be a lot higher with that main event. Some good stuff on this show, though. Some really, really good stuff. Once again, great promos on this show. Great little angles. And we're doing well with that. We've lost popularity. It's annoying. Becky killing it. Becky and Seth killing it. Becky and Seth. Um, McIntyre with a good promo. AJ and Christian, good promo. All this sort of stuff that's backing it up is pretty good. I mean, Orton, I was hoping that had breached the 70. I was hoping Becky had breached the 70. Lashley and Axel's low as well. I would say, uh, great uh, tag team contest there. Great tag team contest there. The triple threat didn't quite live up to scratch. That's okay, though. We'll carry on. Main event is next. Um, what I can confirm to you is one of the matches for main event. Big E will be in action, taking on Humberto Carrillo. Okay, main event opens up with a tag team contest. It's Cedric Alexander teaming with Apollo Crews. Against the glorious show-offs, that's Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Let's see what happens here. It's a 58. That is not as good as I thought it would be. That is interesting. Apollo 56, Cedric 56, Roode and Ziggler 54. They're really off their game, both of them. That's disappointing. Excellent chemistry, by the way, Cedric and Apollo, which is good to see. Renee Young did some good work at ringside as the heel manager, which is really interesting. But a 58. I was hoping for better. I was hoping it might even reach 70 if they could do a classic. But no ricochet, no classic, I guess. Anyway, we'll move on. Afterwards, Charlie Caruso comes into the ring to interview Apollo and Cedric and ask them what they're thinking about MVP and Lashley's offer. And they reveal that maybe, maybe they, they bring up a lot of good points. A little bit maybe that they're considering the offer from MVP and Bobby Lashley. Uh, we do a hype video on Becky and Shayna and sort of Becky taking the bump on Monday and getting carted out by an ambulance. We come back from that for the announced team to say that, uh, yeah, we've got a medical update on Becky Lynch. She's had a scan. There is no damage done to her neck, no damage done to her brain either. She had, she had a CT scan and they have found nothing. It was a precautionary um it was a precautionary ambulance ride. She may have lost consciousness, but she's okay. And she will be a Monday Night Raw this Monday. So Becky Lynch is okay. Um, we want to put that out there that she will be on Raw and be looking perhaps for some revenge for the attack. Cesaro and Jeff Hardy had a backstage argument for 64. Cesaro and Jeff both struggled off script, which is a shame. Maybe should have scripted the both of them, but that's okay. I don't really script anyone anymore. I want to really give people opportunities to do it themselves. But what the argument is about is Cesaro saying that Jeff just doesn't have what it takes anymore. Doesn't have what it takes to be a WWE superstar. Doesn't have what it takes to be a top champion. 
Jeff. You might have been WWE champion 10, 12 years ago, but now you do not have what it takes. Maybe perhaps a start of a push of a Universal Championship um, opportunity for Jeff Hardy. We'll find out more on that later in the episode. 64, though, is okay. Another tag team contest here as the Usos were in action against the Forgotten Sons. This is pretty good. 60 rated segment. Uh, 66 for Jay, 67 for Jimmy, 32 and 30 for Blake and Cutler respectively. It's a pretty good performance from the Usos, this. Um, yeah, really pushed it. And the Usos get the victory, of course, over the Forgotten Sons. They're still baby faces for now. The Usos for now. Big E got a promo on Kofi ahead of the main event of main event. 74 rated promo here from Big E. He says he will deal with Kofi Kingston's actions on SmackDown. A reason to watch SmackDown for anybody invested in this storyline. Now their main event of main event sees Big E take on Humberto Carrillo for 65. So this is okay without being spectacular. Big E 63. His performances have got to improve now that we're pushing him properly. Hopefully they will. Uh, 50 Humberto isn't great but yeah it is what it is. It is what it is and that gives us a 66 rated main event. Standard pretty much. Standard stuff. I was hoping for better with some of the matches we put on. But pretty standard stuff. Big E's promo, probably the highlight, but that's about it. So, fine. No issues. Okay, we move on to NXT. And like I said at the start of the episode, we have just three to four weeks ahead of uh, NXT TakeOver. A really quick turnaround for NXT. Main roster type turnaround, weirdly. Um, so, we have to try and put some things in motion. Um, I'm not necessarily going to bring plans for where I was going forward. I'm probably going to use this takeover as a sort of, uh, I don't know, a, a medium type show. It's not your normal NXT TV show, but it's not your spectacular NXT takeover either. It's going to be a story building show. That's the plan. We open up tonight though with one of the men involved in last week's NXT Championship triple threat matchup. Keith Lee successfully defended against Matt Riddle. Um, Matt Riddle took the pin, but the other man involved in that was Finn Balor. Finn Balor is here tonight to open the show and he has title intentions. He comes out and he, well, he challenges Keith Lee for TakeOver. But he may challenge Keith Lee for TakeOver. There's one man and one group who have an issue with that. Out come the Undisputed Era. I've actually, in terms of the game, I put Adam Cole and Finn Balor. Um, but it's more Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, no Bobby Fish. I'll get to that in a second. Um, they are sort of saying that, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, why are you suddenly just getting the title shot? There's one man who deserves a championship, a rematch. He deserves that shot. The greatest NXT champion of all time, Adam Cole. Uh, Cole's with them and Cole is a bit more with it this week. Um, he's seemingly getting there. He does say that he wants his shot um, and... William Regal does come out. We can I haven't quite put it there, but William Regal does come out and Regal makes the matchup for next week. A number one contenders matchup. The winner gets a shot at Keith Lee for the NXT Championship at NXT Takeover 31. It's Finn Balor versus Adam Cole. This segment, by the way, 89. That is incredible. That might be the best segment we've ever had on the series. I don't think we've breached a 90 yet. So it's up there amazing stuff foreshadowed his face turn Balor was a little bit of a struggle but it's all about Adam Cole here and he did very very well the first contest then is Pete Dunne going to be in action Pete Dunne is taking on well a bit of a weird one Rinku Singh he's took on I haven't used him yet I thought I'd use him see what he did 38 wasn't bad actually Pete Dunne with an in-ring performance of 62 and the bruiser weight gets the victory uh, 63 rated matchup pretty good solid start to NXT 12 minutes it took the bitter end did the business and um, Pete Dunne last week of course challenged Johnny Gargano he said he wants a championship gold around his waist and he took the challenge to the North American champion this week Johnny Gargano accepts the challenge for a 64, which is okay, not bad. Um, Gargano needs, was struggling a little bit. He says he accepts, and we will see that matchup at NXT TakeOver 31. It is the king of NXT TakeOver, Johnny TakeOver, Johnny Gargano, against the king of British Strong Style, Pete Dunne. It is going to be a hard-hitting, glorious battle. 
for the NXT North American Championship. Pretty good stuff so far. Speaking of the Garganos, Candice LeRae cut a backstage promo on Tegan Knox, just talking through her issues with Tegan, really. She says Tegan has just been getting opportunity after opportunity when Candice LeRae is 10 times the wrestler that Tegan Knox is, yet Candice LeRae has got how many NXT Championship opportunities? Zero. Because someone in the office has a little bit of a Tegan preference, obviously. Well, Candice LeRae is going to take Tegan Knox off the board. She's going to take her out of the equation and make NXT the Gargano way. 50 rated segment, pretty good. Candice LeRae can do better than that though, I think, but still not bad. Speaking of the NXT Women's Championship, Dakota Kai was in action. Uh, the champion was in action, teaming up with Raquel Gonzalez against Casey Catanzaro and Mercedes Martinez. Mercedes is a babyface on this. I'm going to use it as a babyface. Why not? Dakota Kai was the best of a lot. A really good performance from her. 58. She's improving week in, week out. 36 from Raquel. 39 from Mercedes. 41 from Casey, by the way, is really, really impressive. A 53-rated tag match. Not bad for an NXT TV show. I will take that. To be honest with you, two and a half, two and three quarter star. Good storyline building stuff. Dakota and Raquel as a team look unstoppable. And Casey and Mercedes get a little bit of ring time action in the ring with the NXT Women's Champion. Afterwards, Dakota Kai cuts a promo on Mia Yim for 53. Tonight, Mia Yim faces off with Io Shirai. And Dakota says Mia Yim soon enough will be batted back down to obscurity. She will lose tonight and be gone. And you know what? She's that confident that Mia Yim will lose tonight to Io Shirai that Dakota says, if Mia Yim can pick up the victory, the unlikely victory, the very, very, very not going to happen victory, then Mia Yim can get a title shot at TakeOver. Dakota Kai is that confident. Why is she that confident? guess we'll find out later 53 is a good little promo from dakota kai 46 for a match here uh well let's talk through this one this isn't bad actually for 46 i mean they're both putting in ring forms for 50 but uh, a couple of things struggled with it the crowd were turned off having a match outside the pre-show between these two that's harsh on a tv show I mean, that is harsh. I will say that much. But as you can see, the newly named Santos Escobar defeated Dominic Dijakovic. Um, in the match, we had Raul Mendoza run in and, and turn on Dijakovic. He's now a heel alongside Santos Escobar. I thought he already was, but I checked the roster and he's not. So we can handle those changes. Uh, Raul Mendoza can be turned heel with an alpha male gimmick. Um, gives a large boost to star quality. That's good. Uh, received initial rating of great so a good gimmick and the terms are complete success and Santos Escobar has one of his stable with him 46 though is a bit harsh I think that's a bit harsh these two have done quite well Santos is a heel that we can push going forward for certain and yeah I'm pretty pleased with this 46 good good stuff afterwards Santos Escobar gets on the mic and says you are in the realm you are in the time of Legado del Fantasma Today starts the day that NXT is reborn again and reborn in the image of the correct lucha, the correct wrestling, the correct British strong style, anything you want to call it, it we will bring style, substance and most of all talent to this wrestling ring week in, week out. And I say we... And I don't just mean me and Raul. Here is the newest member of Lagada del Fantasma. And out comes Joaquin Wilde, 33. It's not done fantastic. Santos Escobar needs scripting, which is a shame. But there's the official turn for Joaquin Wilde too. Um, it's a little bit, yeah, it's not, I'm not sure this is going to go down well. But we've, I'm just thinking let's just put them together and then we can build them up from there. So we will do the turn. Um... Very good for the gimmick, which is good. Uh, that is good. And the terms of complete success. So we got away with that one. We've actually got away with that one. I'll take it. But Legado del Fantasma are complete, at least in terms of what the real life completion is so far. Maybe eventually we'll add more. I do like the idea of a woman in this stable, a female member, but we'll get to that eventually. 34, though, he's okay without being spectacular. 
Six man tag here for a 66, really good matchup. And it's Timothy Thatcher teaming with Cameron Grimes and Karrion Cross against Kushida, Danny Birch, and Oni Lorkin. They got 10 minutes or so to have a decent matchup. And as you can see, Karrion Cross made Danny Birch submit with the cross jacket. Cross was brilliant here, a 73 from him, really carried it. 60 from Cameron Grimes, 47 from Thatcher isn't bad at all. Kashida, 66, and then Birch and Lorcan, 33 and 40, not bad at all. Thatcher was actually off his game, so I wonder if he could have reached the sort of 55 level, perhaps. Good, pretty good stuff, to be honest with you. No, no complaints at all. Six men at the moment who aren't involved in storylines, but eventually may be used in those particular positions, particularly Karen Crux. And Timothy Thatcher, Kishida's just come off the back of that great match with Gargano. So, yeah, good stuff. Um, and these are the sort of people that should, we should be using week in, week out if they're not in a storyline, just as getting wrestling matches on the show. So that's what we've done today. Karrion Cross then got a promo on Johnny Gargano for 67, basically saying he understands that uh, he's got to wait in his line. Fine. But TikTok, the time is ticking away. And after TakeOver 30, you can bet that he will be waiting for the winner of Pete Dunne and Johnny Gargano. 67, pretty good promo. Not quite as good a promo here from the Grizzled Young Veterans. 53, they could have promo on Breezango. We are going to continue that storyline because um, it gives us a match that makes sense in terms of the storylines we're doing for a takeover around the corner. So we'll do the rematch there, uh, perhaps with a gimmick, I'm thinking. 53, uh, James Drake actually did better than Zach Gibson there, which is very rare, so... I'll say Gibson had a one-off. Backstage, Adam Cole and Roderick Strong are talking tactics ahead of tonight's main event when they'll team up together to take on Bree Zango. 74 for the segment. Brilliant. Adam Cole is superb at the moment. Everything he does. And they're talking tactics. And Adam Cole is starting to get with it a little bit more, but not quite. And it's starting to see that he's not quite sharp at the moment 74 64 for a decent match up here kyle o'reilly was in action defeating tony nice in about 10 minutes nice was off his game with a 44 but kyle o'reilly 64 really carried this one and kyle o'reilly gets a good victory as you can see though there is no bobby fish out there and after the match o'reilly cut a promo on one of the opponents last week in the tag match bronson reed bobby fish i'm afraid has suffered an injury and it's a bad one. I think he suffered it. And it's a bad one. I think he suffered it at a house show. But we're going to say in storyline he suffered it last week in the victory over Bronson Reed and his partner. I can't remember who I teamed, up, teamed him up with. But we're going to blame Bronson Reed here. Kyle O'Reilly is blaming Bronson Reed for being clumsy, for being rough, for being a, just a, a, a dragon, a, a rhino in the ring. That's probably a better one. Rhino. Um, Kyle O'Reilly is not pleased with Bronson Reed injuring his friend. And he vows revenge on Bronson Reed. We come back from break to find Regal has booked the matchup. Next week, it'll be Kyle O'Reilly taking on Bronson Reed on NXT. Okay, then one of the signature matches on the card gets us a 71. Very good contest between two women who have pretty good chemistry. Mia Yim defeats Io Shirai by submission with a guillotine choke after botched interference from Dakota Kai. Mia Yim 50, Io Shirai 65. Um, and let's, let's talk through that finish then. Earlier tonight, Dakota Kai said she is that confident that Mia Yim won't win, that Mia Yim will get a title shot if she does. Why was she so confident? Because Dakota Kai was guaranteed to make sure it didn't happen, but it failed. And she ended up colliding with Io Shirai. Mia Yim picks up the victory. 71 for a very good matchup. And that means it's confirmed that at NXT TakeOver 31, Dakota Kai will be defending her NXT Championship, her NXT Women's Championship against Mia Yim. Two great workers will hopefully have a very good women's division matchup. 71 for the match here, though, is very good. From Mia Yim to her in real life partner keith lee the nxt champion cut a promo um we sort of said on bala but it's also cole as well saying that next week these two men two former nxt champions perhaps the two best nxt champions of all time are gonna go one on one and yeah the winner gets me at takeover is that a punishment perhaps for them it is but one thing's for certain i will fight the best I will find anyone who wants a shot at this gold because I am all about opportunity. 72, Keith Lee with a very good promo on Finn Balor. Balor then comes out for commentary to watch the main event where he's scouting Adam Cole, perhaps. Cole will be teaming with Roderick Strong against Breezango and the main event gets us 
A 75. Stick Adam Cole in a main event and he will will provide. As you can see, they lose. The Undisputed Era lose here to Breezango. Tyler Breeze pinning Roderick Strong with a beauty shot after Adam Cole wiped out Roderick Strong by accident. Adam Cole not quite with it mentally, you see. His timing's not potentially right with Roderick Strong. They didn't work well as a team, which actually goes into the storyline right now, so that's not too bad. Um, and Cole ends up costing Roderick Strong the victory. Cole and Strong sort of having words to end the show as well. Just a little bit of tease that there's a bit of dissension in the Undisputed Era ranks. 49 from Fandango, 59 from Tyler, 50 from Roderick Strong, but the man of the match, Adam Cole with a 75. He is a reason why that's a 75 for sure. Very good match to end the show and a 75 rated NXT. I thought I'd fix the British region. I guess I have not. Still, pretty good stuff and uh, some big matches planned for next week then. Of course, that number one contenders match will be your main event. Adam Cole versus Finn Balor. But don't, don't slouch on Kyle O'Reilly and Bronson Reed. That will be a very good match. And then you've got other things happening and we should hopefully have a good show next week. Pretty good stuff this week. We'll move on to NXT UK where the NXT tag team titles will be on the line. Okay, time for NXT UK. Now, we open up with Alexander Wolf on his way to the ring, cutting a promo on Killian Dane ahead of their matchup uh, for 23. Not great. Uh, basically, what he says here is that he wants to prove himself tonight. He wants to prove the most insane of the brothers. He's considering, considering Killian Dane on brother because of the sanity past. Um, and he says to prove it, why don't we make this no disqualification? And yeah, as he's on his way to the ring, he does that backstage promo, and as he's on the way to the ring, it's announced as a no DQ match. Johnny Saints agreed, and this is a no DQ match. It's Alexander Wolf against Killian Dane for a 49, which is pretty good. A hardcore matchup, I've said. No DQ, it's the same thing. And the Ulster Plantation does the business for Alexander, sorry, for Killian Dane against Alexander Wolf. 55 from Dane carried this one. Announcing quality was a bit low, but that's that's a shame. But everything else was pretty good. Uh, yeah, and Killian Dane, another victory over an Imperium member. Kelly Ray got a promo on Ginny for 40. She sort of said about how Ginny wants a shot. She can have the shot whenever she likes. And uh, Kelly Ray is a fighting champion and she will defend this belt whenever whenever she's need to. The Ojmo was in action against Joel Redman, but it didn't quite click. 41 still, though, so we got away with it. The Ojmo 42, Joel Redman 28. Didn't quite click, though, and it brought it down a little bit. So, yeah, another good win for the Ojmo, though, over a big heel. And afterwards, he gets on the mic and says to Rob Terry, who challenged him last week, I'll see you next week. So, 43, pretty good promo from the Ojmo. Now we get to quite some interesting stuff. A segment here between Chris Brooks, Tyler Bate, that also involves Trent Seven. We'll get to that. 63 for the segment. And Brooks says he's here to apologise. And he brings out Tyler Bate for an apology. And Brooks says, I'm not apologising for anything that I've done to you. I'm apologising for what I just did to a friend of yours. And uh, it comes on the screen. Trent Seven is down. He's been attacked. He's hurt quite clearly. It was Chris Brooks who attacked Trent Seven, Tyler Bates' friend, of course, really good friend, Mustache Mountain, you know, don't know what that means. Um, either way, Trent Seven is down, he's hurt. Chris Brooks has done that. Tyler Bates rushes to the back to try and help Trent Seven, who quite clearly cannot compete tonight. Dave Mastiff arrives on the scene as Trent Seven's been sort of taken away. And Dave Mastiff has no idea what to do because it looks like he's going to have to defend his championship on his own. And Tyler Bate agrees to step in. Tyler Bate will sub in for Trent Seven, the injured Trent Seven. Tyler Bate will try and keep his tag team championship. 45 for that segment. Will he keep his tag team championship though? Anybody who knows wrestling knows where this is going. The winner. Well, the winners. And... New Tag Team Champions, Eddie Dennis and Joe Hendry. There's a lot to this. There is a lot to this one. So, yeah, Tyler Bate is subbing in for Trent Seven. And it's obvious in wrestling that he's going to lose, lose the championships. That's what happened. But it's not just that. 
Out comes uh, Chris Brooks, who distracts Tyler Bate during the finish. Means Dave Mastiff gets pinned after Joe Hendry submitted him. Blatantly cheating as well. Pretty good. But Hendry and Dennis win the tag team titles. Mastiff was the weak link with a 33. Bate was brilliant. 68, 42 and 43 for the heels. And we've moved the championships on again now to hear the heels, Eddie Dennis and Joe Hendry. 55, a pretty good end to the show for NXT. 54, pretty good stuff. And lots of storyline potential now. Tyler Bate has cost Trent Seven the tag team championships. How will Trent Seven respond? Chris Brooks has got one over on Tyler Bate, it seems. Will Bate get a response there? How does Dave Mastiff feel about it? We've got new tag team champions. Killian Dane is on a roll and seemingly heading towards Volta. And yeah, the Ojmo and Rob Terry next week. Oh, momentous. Okay, it's time for SmackDown on Fox. Last week I said I was planning to bring in the new general manager this week. We can do it. Here we go. Vince McMahon announces the new general manager of SmackDown is the wrestling guard, John Bradshaw Layfield. Now, listen, we've got a babyface GM on Raw. I wanted a heel GM for SmackDown. Who better than the man that headlined SmackDown for over a year and a half in the mid-2000s? JBL. He can speak on the mic. He's got a good character, a good heel character. You can hate. I think there's a lot we can do here with JBL as GM. So that's what we're doing. And straight away he comes in and says, I want new faces. I want the Universal Championship to be the most sought after championship in the company. So, four men who have never had a shot at the Universal Championship. As far as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, that's not. So, four men who may not have gotten all the opportunities this year that have impressed me get a chance tonight. There'll be a fatal four-way, and the winner of that matchup gets to take on The Fiend for the Universal Championship at Clash of Champions. The four men involved in the match are Cesaro, Elias, Jeff Hardy, and Ricochet. Those four men will do battle tonight in the main event and the Fiend will wait at the Clash of Champions. It's going to be an interesting matchup. I'm going to put them in the main event. I'm not sure how well it's particularly going to do because they're not obviously the biggest stars, but uh, let's get a new challenger for the Fiend. Someone a little bit different um, to hold us over for a while is the idea. 64 though, we got a new GM and a big match planned. The opening contest sees newly healed Big E defeat Kalisto for a 72. Very good start to the show. Big E, 68. That's the performances you need from Big E. That is good. 60 for Kalisto and a very good win for Big E. The big end in under 10 minutes. Done, done, done the business. So good stuff. Heel Big E wins. Afterwards, he gets on the mic and says to Kofi Kingston, I understand you've got a big, big matchup tonight for the Intercontinental Championship. I wish you the best of luck with that. And I do genuinely mean that. However, when you are done with that match, win or loss, I'm going to be outside waiting for you in that parking lot and we are going to deal with this like men big e with a big challenge for kofi kingston maybe a back stage brawl on its way tonight into jbl's new gm office we go and the miz and morrison come in and complain about the fact that Sami Zayn is getting his Intercontinental Championship rematch, but they have yet to have their SmackDown Tag Team Championships rematch. JBL agrees. Of course he does. The heels is what they do. They team together here. JBL says, fine, you've got it. And you know what? I'm going to give you a chance today, a chance tonight, to soften up your opponents. Miz and Morrison don't like where this is going. As The Miz takes on Roman Reigns, Tonight. Next week is the tag match, the tag title match. Tonight, the Miz and Reigns. Oh, and it's next. So maybe he heals, but he's still being a dickhead to absolutely everyone, JBL. 73, good good segment. The match itself, the Miz and Roman Reigns. Big matchup for the middle of the card. Let's see how it goes. Wow, an 81. That is what you want to see. Perhaps should have been the main event. All right. Oh, well. Roman Reigns, 79. Miz, 74. Very good contest. 14 minutes they got. And a good win for Roman Reigns. Miz not got the momentum going into next week's championship rematch. Miz and Morrison against Roman Reigns next week should be pretty special. 81, though. Very good. Very good. And after the match, obviously, Reigns and Brian are celebrating in the ring. When out come the Usos. And the Usos are here 
to beat down Miz and Morrison. They destroy the Miz and John Morrison for 72 and walk away from Reigns and Brian just sort of nodding their head. Reigns and Brian are pretty, pretty, they find it funny that Miz and Morrison have been beaten down. The Usos perhaps send their message to the tag team division here. 72, pretty good stuff. Women's division contest here as Bailey defeats Dana Brooke for 56. 58 from Bailey. Dana Brooke 39. Last week, Bailey attacks Sasha Banks from behind. She's not done with the women's champion and she makes her intentions clear with a challenge to Sasha Banks. Clash of champions. The championship on the line, but not just a simple singles match. Oh, no, 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 no. A submission match. Bailey says she wants to make Sasha tap and win back her championship. Will Sasha accept? We'll find out next week. No Sasha tonight. The week off after the uh, attack last week, she's nursing her injuries. She'll be back next week to accept the challenge you would expect. Xavier Woods tries to talk Big E out of the backstage brawl scheduled for later on. 71 for the promo, Big E says, but he has to do it. He has to do it for him and he has to do it for the Woods himself. Woods may not realise what Kofi's been doing, but Big E has caught on and Big E is refusing to bow down to the tyranny of Kofi Kingston. Big E sounds like a baby face. He's not because he's all wrong, but you get my point. The best heels genuinely believe they're correct. Big E genuinely believes he's correct. 71. Braun Strowman is in the swamp. Last week we revealed that he's gone to the swamp to find himself and here he is looking around barns, empty barns, in the dark and he finds a sheep mask, a black sheep mask and that's where the vignette ends. 71. Again, we're keeping Braun Strowman out of the title picture for a month. And then eventually we'll put him back in is the idea for a big matchup. So we're going to give him a little bit of character building. 71. Good stuff. Ahead of the main event tonight, Jeff Hardy cut a promo on Bray Wyatt for 74. This isn't bad, but he struggled a little bit going off script. Of course, Jeff still got the issues with Cesaro and Elias opponents tonight, though. So maybe he will get some of those issues sorted. And he wants to move on to the Universal Championship. On, on main event, Cesaro questioned whether he has what it takes to be the top champion. Jeff Hardy wants to prove he can against Bray Wyatt. Backstage angle here. A lot of people involved. Uh, Brian and Reigns are with the Usos, sort of having a drink, uh, sort of sort of having a drink and celebrating Reigns' win earlier tonight. And yeah, and in come Ricochet and Mustafa Ali and they challenge Reigns and Brian. They say, listen, they say, we want to fight the best. You two right now are the very best. Just just put that out there. You win next week, we want our shot. And Roman Reigns says, any time, any time. Reigns is that guy, he will take on anyone. But the interesting bit is in the background where the Usos are watching on and they don't look happy. 73, uh, yeah, very good segment this. Sonia Deville defeated Carmella in just under five minutes for a short match here, but they did the business. A 49, actually that's pretty low for that. That's surprisingly low. But Sonia Deville defeats Carmella. After the match, she attacks her too for 45. And what I can see in my head with this is that Carmella's got these long flowing blonde locks, right? She swings her with the hair into the into the um, barricade, into the barricade. She just swings her into the barricade and takes Carmella out with the attack here. 45, Sonia looks like a monster and that's what we want her to look like right now. Sami Zayn cut a promo on Kofi Kingston ahead of their Intercontinental title match. Uh, Zayn vows to win back the championship tonight and says that it's just a little bit of a hiccup on his plan of being the greatest artiste SmackDown has ever seen. 60 for the segment is okay. The match itself though, I'm expecting good things from this. Sami Zayn versus Kofi Kingston for the Intercontinental Championship gets us a 79, that is how it's done, boys. Again, perhaps that should have been the main event. We're going with the number one contender match. Whether it bites us in the bottom, I'm not sure. Kofi Kingston, though, successfully retained the Intercontinental Championship. The 19 minutes they got, the SOS did the business. 68 from Zayn, 70 from Kofi Kingston. But as you can see here, there was no sign of Big E during the matchup. Kofi Kingston picks himself up, has his arm raised, puts his championship on his shoulder and heads up the ramp. Straight away, he's heading to the back to deal with Big E. Kofi's looking ready to fight. Big E was ready to fight earlier, and they do fight. Kofi Kingston goes out there. However, when Kofi goes out there, there's no Big E to be found. Big E attacks him from behind. 
with a steel pipe, a 72 rated segment, Big E, the heelish way, the most dastardly attack really from behind against his former friend, his former brother, his former family member really of the New Day and Big E has completely shattered the power of positivity with this attack. 72, Big E leaves Kofi laying. Ricochet cut a promo on Bray Wyatt ahead of the main event. Ricochet, of course, is involved with Jeff Hardy and Cesaro and Elias in this fatal four-way. Ricochet says, you know what? He's always been the underdog and he gets that against the Fiend. He will be the underdog, but let's rise to the occasion. Let's be the one and only Universal Champion. Ricochet wants his shot. Right then, right then, let's do it. Fatal four-way, Jeff, Elias, Cesaro and Ricochet. Which man is going to clash of champions and will it be a good match? Yes, it will. Wow, Jeff Hardy defeats Cesaro, Elias and Ricochet to qualify for that championship match and it's confirmed now. Get the graphic on the screen. It is clash of champions. Jeff Hardy will challenge the Fiend. Bray Wyatt, both men with mystical creatures deep inside themselves, who will stand tall and be universal champion. Hell of a matchup though, this main event. 80 rated segment, 68 from Cesaro, Elias 63, Jeff 63, but it was Ricochet who really carried this with a 75, boosted to an 80 with a good announcing, good road work agent, I would think. Very good stuff. Jeff pinned Ricochet, interestingly, with a twist of hate. Guess they can't say a twist of fate anymore. Elias was an amazing heel. That's very good. Jeff, an amazing baby face, as was Ricochet. Uh, good hot crowd. Very good stuff for me. I'm very pleased with this. Road agent work was good. And Jeff qualifies as he's celebrating. Doof, 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 doof. Nope, not EastEnders. Bray Wyatt is here. And he stands on the stage. He's intimidating Jeff Hardy. He wants him to be scared. The Fiend is here and he holds up the Universal Championship on the stage to end the show. Jeff's in the ring. 83 for the segment. What a great show SmackDown's been. A 79. I kind of expected better, actually. Look at all the goddamn greens. You're giving me a 79. What? I mean, Sonia and Carmella, really, was the only thing that brought it down. Oh, that is harsh. But anyway, still a very good SmackDown Live. And we are set now for Clash of Champions. The, the card is starting to become very, very clear. Jeff and Bray Wyatt for the Universal Championship. We've got the Fatal 4-Way, Drew, AJ, uh, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens for the WWE Championship. We've got potential Intercontinental Championships surrounding the New Day. I'm not revealing exactly what the title match is yet. Uh, we will probably confirm it next week, so be aware of that. Bailey has challenged Sasha for the SmackDown Women's Championship in a submission match. Sasha's going to accept that, I can tell you that now. That's definitely going to happen. What's going to happen with the SmackDown Tag Team Championships? You've got Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan involved, Miz and Morrison involved, the Usos involved, and so are Ali and Ricochet now, so that's interesting. On the Raw side, the Raw Tag Team Championships are confirmed. It's going to be uh, Authors of Pain defending against um, Viking Raiders. You've got the Raw Women's Championship. Becky Lynch, will she be okay? We'll find out on Monday. Will she challenge um, Sonya Deville? Where does Charlotte fit into all this? There's a lot going on on the main roster. And NXT TakeOver is also flying through. Next week, Adam Cole versus Finn Balor and the NXT Championship shot at TakeOver 31 is on the line. That should be amazing. I am genuinely thinking that could be amazing. It's going to be great. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, make sure you subscribe to the channel to make sure you uh, oh, don't miss any of it, I guess is the best way to say it. I've talked a lot today. Let's uh, let's wrap this up. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you like the video. And, and yeah, I was going to say subscribe to the channel again. Subscribe to the channel again if you like. Until next time, peace. Oh, going for a lie down now.